We're going to talk about urge stress and sphincter uh, insufficiency. Urge incontinence. Well, we know what urge incontinence is. I experienced, I experienced urgency of a severe variety the other night that might have turned into urge incontinence. I had a bag of groceries. I'm walking in, and gosh, the keys are not in this pocket, so I have to shift this over. And all of a sudden, I realized that my bladder was full. So while I was doing this, I was doing a little jig until I found the keys, got in the door, and got into the restroom, and things became much more comfortable. Uh, you have just seen urgency at work in three dimensions. Another name for this is overactive bladder. What it really means is the detrusor, the part of the bladder that has that compliant characteristic where it can store and empty, something's not right. It's, it's working in a way that is abnormal. So what do we do about it? Well, I just raised my arm and put it down in this hand. Now, I'm not plugged into anything, I don't think. Well, maybe. This is a chemical reaction. This is one of the things that makes us miraculous, frankly. How can I think that I want to move my hand and make a chemical make a fist? But I did it, and you can do it. Well, as Heidi was explaining, and as we showed you in this year dynamic study, the brain is wired into the bladder nerves, and they go through changes in chemicals. And those changes in chemicals determine whether it works normally or abnormally. Uh, there's ways we can modify this. Without getting into great detail, there's medications. There's lots of medications. These are some of them. Vesicare, Detrol LA, Ditropan, Enablex, and on the story goes. What we're really doing is modifying the chemistry that makes the bladder go through its paces. But sometimes that doesn't work. Sometimes that's the problem, is just the detrusor or the storage area muscle out of control. How else could we modify this? Well, there's a treatment strategy called Interstim. Well, this is a pacemaker for the bladder. And essentially, there's this continual reverberation of chemicals or impulses going up and down the spinal cord that are moderated at the micturition reflex center. If these don't respond to chemical management, which is just at the end plates where these nerves deliver their chemicals to the muscles, which is what the drugs for the most part do, we can take fine platinum electrodes and we can essentially put them in and that innervation uh, can be modified with an electrical impulse, which is essentially the pacemaker. And we can take bladders that are contracting uh, too much and giving you that urgency and urge incontinence and quiet them down. It's not for everybody, it's for those who don't respond to medications. And we can even take bladders, in some instances, that are big and can't contract to empty out completely, and we can stimulate them to empty more efficiently using the bladder pacemaker. It's a procedure that's uh, done totally as an outpatient. Uh, this uh, pacemaker is implanted underneath the skin, usually in this area, and the electrodes go to the sacrum. It's one way to do it. It's certainly not the only way. All right, now we're going to talk about stress incontinence. The bottom line is that when you go through sudden physical activities, which could be coughing, sneezing, lifting, laughing, uh, you lose urine. People who have had injury to the pelvis, the bladder in the wrong position, and the shutoff valve doesn't work properly, and that is what makes up stress incontinence. Coughing, sneezing, straining puts pressure on the upper component of the bladder but not equal and offsetting pressure on the lower, and that's where you see uh, stress loss of urine. So how can you treat this? We can use educational methods, behavioral uh, therapy, and 
pelvic floor exercises and biofeedback allow us to do that. So what else can we do? We can use surgical treatment. This is the female pelvis and we essentially have placed a sling through this muscle group here, which is called the obturator muscle group, around the urethra. And what that does, the downward motion is minimized. And what there is of the downward motion, when it occurs, this being relatively fixed, will close off the urethra so the leakage doesn't occur. This has gotten so sophisticated. So here we are. Uh, here's the obturator muscle. And here's this sling around the urethra. And this little dart is able to, to uh, retain the sling in this position. In our place, we have a surgery center. It's really a hospital operating room that's been moved away from the hospital in a separate environment. All right, gentlemen, there is a sling uh, manufactured by American Medical Systems called the Advanced Sling that you can take this low-lying bladder neck and pull it back up into the abdominal cavity with the addition of this sling. So now what about sphincter insufficiency? The shutoff valve just isn't getting the job done. Well, there's a number of issues to be considered. If, for instance, a person has had a radical prostatectomy, there's a little scar tissue there. <clears throat> that scar tissue is not as compliant as the normal tissues are. And the sealing of the urethra from surface tension is somewhat defective. If this muscle then that makes up the sphincter that, that puts some tone around the urethra to bring it together so the surface tension can seal it is somehow disrupted. When that muscle group isn't working as well as it can work, then we have another option, this device. And I was involved in the development of the artificial urinary sphincter. This is the sphincter implanted. Everything is inside. Uh, this is next to the bladder. This is around the urethra, and this is within the scrotum. It allows the patient to benefit from this type of technology.